Okay, in this problem, we have a four centimeter tall object, which has been placed 18 centimeters in front of a concave lens. And that concave lens has a focal length of 12 centimeters. And you'll see I've drawn both of the focal points 12 centimeters away from the lens. And first we're gonna go through and draw a ray tracing diagram to determine where the image of this person is going to appear in front of or behind this lens. Then we're gonna go through and use the thin lens equation in order to calculate the image position as well as the magnification and height of the image which appears. So we're gonna start this ray tracing diagram just like we would any other ray tracing diagram. And that is we're going to begin with the principal ray which travels from the top of our object toward this lens parallel to the principal axis. As this ray strikes the lens, it's going to refract. But the catch in this problem is that we're dealing with a concave lens rather than a convex lens. And so we have to be really careful in how we use these two focal points in drawing our ray tracing diagram. Now you'll remember from our introduction to lenses video that when a principal ray travels through a convex lens, it's going to be refracted through this focal point. But when it travels through a concave lens like we're dealing with here, it's actually going to be refracted away from this focal point. So when this principal ray strikes this lens, it's refracted away from this focal point, and it's actually going to appear to have originated from this focal point over here. When dealing with a concave lens, you could really say the focal points are simply switched or reversed from when we're dealing with a convex lens. And as a result, this ray bends upward. The next ray we're gonna deal with is the central ray, which patches straight through the center of this lens. And you'll remember, when a ray passes through the center of a lens, it is not refracted in any direction. It just keeps going in a straight line. Now the last ray we're gonna deal with is the focal ray, which starts from the top of our object and is going to travel through one of these two focal points. Now when dealing with a concave lens, just like with a convex lens, we can only use each focal point once. And you'll see we've already used this focal point over here in dealing with our principal ray. It's this focal point on the far side of the lens which we're going to use in drawing our focal ray for this object. And you'll see I drew this ray as though it's dotted over here because the ray never actually travels along this path. We're simply showing that this ray starting from the top of the object struck the lens as though it was headed towards the focal point. And in remaining true to how a concave lens bends light, when this ray strikes the lens right here, the ray is going to be bent away from this focal point. That means this ray is going to wind up traveling parallel to the principal axis after it passes through the lens. So this ray that was traveling toward this focal point is refracted as it passes through the lens and travels along parallel to the principal axis after it's passed through the lens. And it appears to have originated from somewhere along this dotted line. Now you'll see this point right here is where all of the refracted rays appear to converge. And that is where our image will form in this problem. So here we see an upright and smaller image form on the same side of the lens as the object. And you'll notice these three refracted rays appear to have all originated at this point right here, which is why the image forms here, but they don't actually come from this point right here, which means this image is virtual. So let's go through and confirm these three results using the thin lens equation and the magnification equation. First, let's use the thin lens equation to solve for the image position. Now to differentiate mathematically between dealing with a convex lens, which has a positive focal length, and a concave lens, we're going to show that the focal length in this problem is negative. And that really is just saying that the focal points are flip-flopped or switched when dealing with a concave lens relative to dealing with a convex lens. So plugging in our focal length of negative 12 centimeters and an object distance of 18 centimeters, we find the image distance is negative 7.2 centimeters. Now I want to talk about this negative right here on our image distance. 
When dealing with a mirror, positive and negative values were pretty easy to sort out, because we always had a positive side of the mirror where the object was located, and a negative side of the mirror where the image may appear. When dealing with a lens, things are a little bit more complicated. Just like when dealing with a mirror, the sign of the object position is always going to be positive. But the sign of the image position works a little bit differently. When dealing with a lens, a positive image position indicates the image appears on the opposite side of the lens from the object. But a negative image position indicates the image is on the same side of the lens as the object. And going back to our ray tracing diagram, because these rays appear to converge at this point, but they don't actually physically cross at this point, we say this image is virtual. Next, let's solve for the magnification. The equation for magnification using a lens is the same as it is for a mirror. So plugging in our values, we find the image has a magnification of positive 0 0.04. The positive indicating that the image is upright. And since the magnification is less than one, that's telling us that the image is going to be smaller than the object. And last, let's go through and calculate the height of this image. Plugging in our magnification and the height of the object. And we find the image height is 1.6 centimeters. So this is how you draw a ray tracing diagram and perform the necessary calculations for an object which is placed in front of a concave lens. And on that note, that's all for now.